In today's video, we talk about dietary fat versus carbohydrates for losing body fat. This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I have a really fun video topic for today. But first, I just want to say how excited I am. It's Tuesday, we fly out Thursday morning at like 9, so that means I gotta be at the airport at like 7.30. So Thursday, I probably won't be getting a video out, but my man Chad Nutter is meeting me in Columbus, Ohio. He is going to be my videographer. He has been doing some fantastic work with my buddy Lane Norton's channel. Um, so check out my videos from the weekend because Chad puts together awesome, awesome content. And so we'll be getting lots of training, lots of footage from the expo. But most of all, just want to uh, share the journey with you guys and uh, hopefully get to meet a bunch of you at the expo walking around. Um, I will be at the Core Nutritionals booth. I haven't posted my hours yet. I guess I should do that. Maybe I'll do that on tomorrow's video. So tomorrow's video, look for my hours for the booth, uh, where I'll be, and then um, other than that, just looking forward to shaking hands and putting some faces to names and screen names and um, it's weird sometimes seeing like you know comments and subscriber numbers change but it's really cool for me to put like actual people with that because I don't have a huge YouTube channel but I feel like there's such a good connection with us that I uh, you know I just can't wait to meet and chat with you guys and see what's up and talk about some cool topics like today's topic and so I want to give you a little bit of a backstory about today's topic. So what I did was, I've been thinking about discussing some like scientific research and studies that I feel is valid for fitness in general, fitness life, because I get exposed to a lot of this stuff. I discuss these topics with you know people that I'm friends with who are much smarter than me, people like Dr. Lane Norton, uh, people like Dr. Mike Zordos, lots of doctors, uh, lots of people with PhDs, but at the end of the day, they're researchers and they're studying things and so they actually are able to understand studies, right? So it's been, it's been great for me because I can ask questions of these people and so um, I thought it'd be cool to share some of that on my channel because, you know, there is an importance to research, there is an importance to anecdotal evidence, but I think the best thing to do is just kind of get as much information as possible and make your own decisions and decide what's best for you and how you want to proceed. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the backstory here. So what I did was last night I was working and I was thinking about today's video, I was thinking about you guys, not in a weird way, but I said, let me email my friend, Dr. Joe. That's right, and Dr. Joe has more PhDs than I have master's degrees. Um, so Dr. Joe, I said, hey, you know, give me an idea of your top three most relevant studies that might have an impact on the fitness industry, things like that. And so he gave me a couple, and the third one he mentioned was actually a very cool study um, that came out pretty recently. I think it was August of 2015. So the research was done by Dr. Kevin Hall, and he basically looked at taking a population of overweight people, their average BMI was 36, and their average age was 35, right? And so there was 19 total of them, men and women, I think 10 men, nine women, right? So pretty evenly split, pretty average age, 35, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty overweight, 36 BMI is, um, is definitely overweight. And they put them into a metabolic ward. This means they kept them for the entire study. One of the big issues with doing any kind of study in a general population is that you're, you're, you're asking them to track their calories or track their activity. Well, in this place, they actually kept them for the entire two weeks and then were able to track their activity, to track their diet. They only ate what they were given, things like that. So the accuracy becomes much more reliable, right? So what they did with these 19 people was they wanted to answer the question, is it better to restrict carbohydrates or is it better to restrict fats, right? Now, I'll put the link for the study below so you can read the specifics. 
but I'm just going to get to the results of what happened and I'll kind of explain how they did it. So they basically put them on a caloric diet, right? And the diet was 50% carbohydrates, 35% fats, and 15% protein. Might sound a little low, but again, this is not a population of trained individuals and that's over 100 grams of protein per day based on the calories they were taking in, which was 2,750, right? So when you talk about that was their average diet, right? What they then did was they put them both on restrictive diets. They put them on a, a, a diet loss plan for one week with carbohydrate restriction. Then they put them on the diet with a uh, fat restrictive, right? And both times, calories were equated for, protein was equal. So the only variable was a 30% reduction in calories from either carbohydrates, a 30% reduction in calories from fats. So protein kept the same, calories kept the same. Now, if you're talking about a 30% reduction in calories, that's pretty significant. So let's say you're taking in 3,000 calories a day, right? That's a 900 calorie drop in your total calories. So you would be down to 2,100 calories. So that is a pretty significant drop. So we would expect to see weight loss from both groups no matter what, right? And they did see weight loss, right? But I wanna talk about some of the things that they saw during this process. And right now, I want you to think, which group do you think lost more total body fat? The carbohydrate restricted group or the fat restricted group? Now again, they all had the same calories, they all had the same protein, one group, had 30% dropped from the carbohydrates and the other 30% from their fats. And actually, the entire group did both, right? So they had them do separate weeks, right, where they did these. So the results weren't individual, they were across the board. So what is interesting is that the group that restricted carbohydrates lost 53 grams of body fat per day. The group that restricted the fat actually lost 89 grams of fat per day. So that's 68% more than the group that restricted carbohydrates. Meaning you should eat lots of carbs and no fats. Just kidding, that's not what that means. But I think that it's interesting because a lot of times carbohydrates are demonized. And yet in this study, in a group that we would consider pretty heavily overweight, probably even obese, they were able to lose more body, body fat by restricting fats and keeping carbohydrates elevated, okay? So again, this is not in the typical population that I would work with. I have had quite a few people that I've worked with that would be considered probably a 36 BMI. Um, you know, my friend Garrett comes to mind. And one thing I have always been a proponent of, especially for those of us that train, resistance training now the people in this study did weren't doing resistance training it wasn't mentioned they were walking on a treadmill this group was walking for 60 minutes once a day i believe while they were in the metabolic ward and all of their activities were tracked but for the population that that is watching my videos that i deal with this is why i feel carbohydrates are so valuable especially when it comes to training um, and you don't have to worry about fat loss your carbohydrates are elevated but you balance it out by making sure the calories are equated for you will certainly lose body fat ingesting carbohydrates so what do I want this video to come off as I'm not telling you what to do I'm not telling you that you should do this diet or that diet you know some people just prefer not to eat carbohydrates some people prefer to eat more fats and I'm fine with that too hell we all know the ketogenic diet works but what works for you? What's realistic for your lifestyle, okay? And if you wanna be big and strong and eat carbohydrates and be lean, you can. That's really just my point of this video. It's that there is no one size fits all. Just because you things get demonized in a magazine and the, you know, the war on carbs, this and that, doesn't mean it's necessarily uh, the right answer. This study was very short, who knows? Had the study gone on for a longer period of time, there might have been different results. Had the study been done in a population other than people with a BMI of 36, what if the BMI of the people was 22, 25, which is a more normal range? Who knows? We might have seen some different results. Airplane going by. Yeah, so anyways, that's it, guys. I just wanted to give you the idea, the, the thought that maybe carbohydrates aren't bad but I think if you're watching my channel you know my 
my philosophy, I like to keep carb carbohydrates as high as possible. Um, I keep fats and protein pretty steady. You know, as macros rise and fall, I will keep fats in a certain range. Um, and carbohydrates are the biggest variable. But in the uh, improvement season, carbohydrates can get quite high. And you know, I love to use refeeds and diet breaks and all types of scenarios. So. That's it guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As again, you can, you can click on the link below. I'll put the link to the article I read so you can kind of see where I got my facts from and if I messed anything up. But the biggest point is when it comes to fat loss, there is no one size fits all.